seconds. Thank you. Right. Meeting will come to please come to order. Thank you. All right. Day into the home stretch, I hope. <laughs> it being 11 o'clock, we will take up the uh, motion on D5, Professional and Fan Artist Hugo Awards. I will take a speech for this motion, a speech against this motion, and then proceed to the uh, provided amendment D5-1. That seems to be the sensible way to proceed. So would somebody care to present the uh, motion, please? I think Andrew is Andrew. Point of order. Andrew Adams, uh, point of order. Um, since amendments count as speeches against the motion, surely you would have to take a four against a four and then the amendment. Or a four no, and the amendment. No, amendments just count. No. Amendments count equally against both sides. Time in the amendment. Anyway, would somebody care to put. Uh, speak for this motion, please. perry -Ann. Would a motion to refer this to committee to report next year be in order? Sure. I guess, yes. Then, then I make that, that motion. Is I there am a perry -Ann second? Lurie. Is there a second on that I'm motion? Point of order. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I was giving you a chance. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I believe, Kevin Stanley, thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I believe that the, at least once that the, the maker of the motion gets priority and recognition if they want it or they can yield to that motion to uh, refer to committee. And, and I therefore, uh, I, I think the motion to refer is out of order until the proponent of the motion has been given one opportunity to speak. That seems reasonable to me. Cliff. I am still Cliff Dunn. Um, I will say, say the committee put a lot of time and effort into working this out, but obviously this was also not a uh, unanimous decision as noted in the submission for the business meeting. Um, I'm not quite sure what we will achieve with another year of uh, going around, but if, if the business meeting feels that we do need more revision on this, we can obviously take this up if you desire. Would anybody make, care to make a motion to uh, put this to Committee of the Whole? Yes. Kate. Thank you. Um, does anybody wish to speak to the motion to refer to, to go to Committee of the Whole? Any speech for, speech against? If nobody wishes to, we will vote on the question to uh, refer to, to put it into Committee of the Whole. Yeah, we put it basically into a freer form of debate. I hope Jessie has researched this because I got this dumped on me in 2016 and I'm about to dump it on her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I thought that might be happening. <laughs> I did consider quasi committee of the whole where I would retain the chair, but I thought it'd be good practice for you. <laughs> Those in favour of moving into committee of the whole show. Those against. Motion is passed. Jesse, you have the con. Yeah. Um, we need to set a debate time, yes? No, because I'm the chair. Do we not need to set a time for how long we're going to be in Committee of the Whole? No. Okie doke. Okay. I don't know why you believe that. I, I, I think it's 20 minutes is still the limit. Okay. Are we timing this or not, is what I want to know. <laughs> well, we set a time limit of 20 Okay. I'm going to ask the body to give me, like, two seconds to confer with my lovely chair to make sure I'm going to do this correctly. <laughs> You'll do a good job regardless. Okay. <laughs> right. Basically, they get to express views, which is kind of what we want. Yeah. 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 Anything that's relevant to the main motion, which okay. Yes. 
Yes, it's part of the full 20 minutes. But you only use 40 seconds. But it doesn't go against, it goes equally against yeah, both yeah, sides. Yeah, it goes equally against both sides. Okay, thank you for uh, giving me the time to make sure I know what I'm doing. Okay, so we are now in a Committee of the Whole. The uh, time that we spend here will be taken out of the debate time uh, that has been set for D5. Uh, the time will be charged equally to both sides. The subject of D5, uh, D51, the amendment, and the topic of referring um, back to committee are all uh, germane for this discussion. So given that, is there anyone who wishes to speak? Not Joshua. Sure. Well, I don't have to take notes. It would probably be helpful if you do. Yeah. All right. Um, so I was on the committee. Uh, Joshua Cronengold, sure. Um, so I was on the committee, and what we have is an essential uh, difference in question of direction, which is why I think sending this back to a committee wouldn't help. What we need is a direction from the business meeting in terms of what, what direction we want to go. Um, the current uh, the, um, setup for, um, by, in effect, for professional and fan artist um, says that professional is a very specific and limited group of professionals who make money um, yeah. doing, selling their art. And everybody else is a fan artist. Regardless of whether we would consider them a fan artist, if you're not a professional, you're a fan artist. Daniello came up with a very interesting set of ideas and criteria for what we would consider a fan artist, um, which brings up the possibility that we could, instead of saying the professional is a very limited set, that instead we can say fan artist is a very limited specific set. We want to reward and privilege fan artists and say that if you're not a fan artist by our definition, you can still get a Hugo, but you're, um, but you're competing with professionals. The other possibility, which Ben is proposing, that is the amendment that's, uh, that's up in order, is to say that we would have a very specific and limited set of what we define a professional, a very specific and limited set of what we define a fan artist. Um, and if you're not in one of those categories, you're not eligible for an artist Hugo at all. Personally, I don't like that because I like giving out Hugos to things we like. And if, um, and, you know, if something is not, a, if we're saying fan artist privileged, and something is not technically professional, if they can beat the professionals, then they're professional quality, even if they're not making money. But I think that's the thing we're taking question of. Are we saying we want to exclude things? We want to say fan artist is privileged? Or do we want to say professional is privileged? And that is the direction we really need to have from the business meeting, whether or not we make a final decision today. Uh, ben Yallo? Daniello. Uh, for the most part, I agree with much of Joshua's summary. However, one of the key points that he did not raise, and which is in both the D5 implementation and the D5-1 implementation, is that we are referring to professional artwork and fan artwork and saying that you are eligible in fan artist if you create fan art. You are eligible in professional artist if you create professional art. And the two differ in exact definitions. But the key is that we are not talking about a person as being either a professional artist or a fan artist. We are saying that a fan artist creates fan art a professional artist creates professional art, and the same person can be creating both. So that, for example, when in 1967, Jack Gorn won both the best professional artist and best fan artist, it was because he was creating a brilliant set of book covers and magazine illustrations for the professional magazines, which got him best professional artist. And he was sending out hundreds of cartoons and sketches and things like that to fanzines, which clearly was 